Hey, what's up guys? So I figured today we're gonna do something different and I'm gonna talk more about the patterns that I see. And today, um, there's actually a really good uh, pattern that uh, emerged. Um, some of you may be able to guess what this is, but I figured that on a lot of my day trade videos, I just go over uh, what I did for the day um, and then whenever possible, um, what my thinking process was but here we're gonna talk about just the uh, mechanics of the pattern that I saw and then why I took it a certain way. So I'm not gonna go over my long position uh, that I took on uh, BJ today, but we are going to talk about the short position. And so I kind of saw this pattern emerging, so I started doing a live recording of the trade as it happens and I've already demarcated uh, the lines um, that uh, you see on the screen there. So on the one minute and on the five minute for BJ, I demarcated where I see a particular pattern forming. Um, you still have a few more seconds to guess what that pattern is. Um, so I put lines on the upper boundary of the candlesticks and then I also put lines on the lower boundary of the candlesticks as well. Um, so what you are seeing here, um, here you're seeing a five minute, but on the one minute later on, you'll see, I'm actually going to draw the lines too. It's actually a rising wedge pattern. Um, and so for this particular pattern, um, what it is indicative of is the fact that the stock is going to drop at some point. Um, and where that point is, um, is to be determined. Um, so the, you still have to watch it carefully, but that's sort of the pattern I saw. I drew it and I'm waiting for it to occur. Um, some people would like to take a uh, short on this position near the upper boundary. So when there is a pullback towards the top, um, they would take an entry at that point. So for me, I like to, so you, you know, by doing that, you actually get better margins and whatnot because the stock is gonna fall uh, further. Um, and then there are some school of thoughts that some people would take the, uh, they would cover it on the bottom part of, or just below, uh, you know, where it breaks out of the wedge on, on the lower end. Uh, for me, I prefer confirmation. So what I did was um, I, take a short position just right when the stock is up, where it touches the bottom or right when it breaks out of the bottom section of the uh, lower boundary. Um, that is where I prefer to take it. And then the other thing um, to look at too is if you're paying attention to the volume um, on the stock, you would see that um, the volume, uh, as I am, am about to take the short position near the boundary, you, you see that um, is that the volume will fall off. So here on the bottom uh, section of the charts, whether it's a five minute or one minute, there is a black line. That black line marks out the average volume and those candlesticks on the bottom there is the volume at that particular time in that one minute chart or the five minute chart. Um, there is volume. Volume is going to start to drop a bit um, and it's going to be below average. Um, so that's sort of, you know, the, the signs that I look at. Um, and here on the 15 minute too, um, so this is retrospective. I know what happens now. I'm doing a recap, but on that 15 minute you saw it was making a new 15 minute low. So all the charts sort of align to the fact that this is going to be a short. Um, so I've already taken my position. Uh, on the short, as you see, uh, you know, I took a thousand shares um, and then we'll see what happens um, with the stock and we'll watch it uh, play out. And in terms of profit, uh, you can technically take it anywhere. Um, on um, the one minute uh, chart, which I will pull down much later on in this video because you can't really see all of it, but you can kind of see the bottom of an SMA rising to the top. Um, I'm very weary of the SMAs, especially since the, the trend lines is it's trending pretty strong. Um, so with the SMA, what can potentially happen is the stock will hit the SMA and then it will bounce. Um, so um, at this point, I was actually sitting kind of pretty with 600, 700 bucks. Um, so, and this is my um, um, 
you know, first time actually documenting and, and actually uh, drawing out the chart, I already made my money, so I wasn't really going to push it uh, too hard. So my uh, exit, I started to exit towards um, where that SMA would be. I think at that point in time, it was like $25.60 or something, somewhere around there. So I was very uh, cognizant of that fact and I started to make sure that I scale out around that level. Here I added to the position because it hit 26, it sort of bounced off that higher level. So it really is about to trend down and then I saw the 15 minute chart and whatnot. So I added to my position 2000 shares um, and I start to set my uh, uh, limit orders um, to exit. So you, you'll see me doing that right there. Um, and um, which I'm, just, I'm not going to talk anymore because everything I needed to say I've already said. Um, we're just going to watch uh, the remainder of this uh, play out uh, and then I'll comment more uh, whenever is necessary. So just watch, watch, watch how this play plays out. This is, uh, it's a recap, but what you're watching here is me recording it live as it was playing out. So I covered some, still waiting, waiting for the stock to continue its fall. So there I added another 500 um, simply because I'm pretty confident and I, if you I, I didn't record so the the one minute chart is kind of cut off there uh, what you would see there is the fact that the um, the EMAs the exponential moving averages are actually kind of starting to flatline so in the five minute if you look at it it's still kind of trending up so there's a upwards curve but on the one minute it sort of start to flatten out um, and it was and, and the SMA was continuing to move up so um, it looked like it is you know there, there's some sort of imminent crossing that's gonna occur so that's why I added to my position added another 500 shares make an even 2000 again at that at, at that particular point that's why you see that short that I took again um,
So I'm just changing where my uh, exits are. So I wanted to be careful um, just in case that I'm off because I already made my money. So I was playing very conservatively here. Um, like I said, I think the level was 2560 where the uh, the blue on the one minute chart, the blue SMA lines um, uh, where, where it was sitting. Um, and so it, it's that's just a vicinity. So it could be 265, 270, who knows? Um, I just wanted to be careful to make sure that when it hits that level, I'm out. Um, so that's that's why I, I uh, set it at a uh, five cent differential. I already made my money. And we'll, we'll see what happens as it plays out. So notice how it hit the upper border of where the, uh, or not the upper border, but the lower end, the upper border of that candlestick hit the lower end of the, um, of the wedge, and now it's falling again. Okay, so you see um, it's falling, 2588. I think I said another one at 2585. Okay, I think there you go. So now I'm all out, 2580. It's a very conservative play. It's like a 20 cent uh, difference, um, 20 cents, uh, you know. So there's the one minute. Um, sorry, I'm not a keep moving it around but you see the wedge formation you see where I took the short where I added to it um, where it hit the border of the top um, and then it just covered and no, notice 2580 actually I was wrong it's not in 2560 2580 hit that line and then it started to pop back up um, obviously the stock continues to trend down later on um, through the rest of the day but um, you never know it could have hit that and then bounced right back up uh, it was pretty strong stock so either way I was being conservative if I held on to another 500, let it ride down, I could have made more money. But it is what it is. Um, hope you like this format. Um, let me know what you think.